The running physiology test is a two-part test that helps us understand you as an athlete, how you run, how you create the performances that you do. So we measure your submaximal physiology, so your lactate thresholds and your running economy, and we also measure your maximal physiology, so your VO2 max or maximal amount of oxygen you're able to take in and use. That can give us an overall picture to be able to develop and give you recommendations of how you can progress your training and hopefully take you to the targets that you've shared with us. The first part of the test is the submaximal test. So after a warm up, you will start running at a nice easy pace. There will be about six to 10 stages and every four minutes the speed will increase. First variable we look at is your expired gases. So you'll be wearing a face mask during your running. So that will be measuring your inspired oxygen, how much you've been able to use, and also your expired carbon dioxide that also allows us to understand how you're using your fuels during your exercise. You'll also be wearing a heart rate monitor so we can measure your heart rate all the way through. At the end of each four minute stage, we will be stopping the treadmill. We'll ask you what your rate of perceived exertion is, which is a scale of six to 20 to start understanding how subjectively hard you're finding that stage. And we'll also take a blood sample from your earlobe. So that blood sample will be analyzed and give us your blood lactate concentration during that stage. Each stage is four minutes long and we increase the pace between each stage by up to one kilometer an hour. The Submax test will give you information about your running economy, so how much oxygen you use at any given speed, and also where your lactate thresholds lie. We can adapt this submaximal test protocol slightly so that if you are training for an endurance event like Ironman or Ultramarathon, it can give you information about how much fat and carbohydrates you use. You have a limited supply of carbohydrate in your body, so you have to keep replenishing that as you use it in an endurance event. So if you know how much you use, then you can make sure you don't run out of energy. Also, optimizing your ability to use fats as a fuel will also help save those carbohydrate stores. So understanding at what speed you optimally use fats as a fuel will allow you to adapt your training appropriately to improve that. When you finish the first part of the test, you'll have about 10 minutes rest before the second part of the test. The second part of the test is the VO2 max test. So you'll be running at a constant speed, which will be two kilometers an hour slower than you finished the submaximal test. From the comfortable pace that you'll be running at, we will then increase the gradient of the treadmill by 1% each minute. This will make it harder and harder for you to keep with the pace and therefore push you towards reaching your max physiological capabilities. So you'll be wearing the face mask again so that we can see what your maximal oxygen uptake is like and we'll also get a measure of your maximal heart rate. After your visit, we'll write up a full report bespoke to you as the individual. We'll look to pull out your strengths and weaknesses as well as provide you with all the data that we collected on your visit to the lab. So the maximal test will tell us what your maximal capacity is. The submaximal test will show us how much of that capacity you're able to comfortably sustain for any particular duration. So we will be able to see whether you can achieve your particular time target with your current physiology or whether you need to work on your maximal physiology to give you room to shift your submaximal physiology up so that you can achieve that particular time target. In your report you will also get some advice on how to train. So there will be a table of training zones which will be based on your physiology data. They will be in kilometres an hour or minute mile pace or minutes per kilometre, whatever you use in training, heart rate and also perception of effort. So if you've not got a heart rate monitor or a way of measuring your speed, you can still use the training zone table to guide training intensity. In the report, we will also give you examples of the types of training sessions you can do to target any particular aspect of your physiology. And we can also give you advice on how to put together a training week. This will hopefully allow you to really find that next level of performance that you are capable of, but haven't been able to access without the increased information we can provide during these tests.